believe a whole year has passed since we've made the dark chocolate pomegranate? No way. Way. <laughs> we didn't rehearse that. <laughs> so, yeah, this is the dark chocolate pomegranate. We um, wrote down some numbers. 1.000, so this is going to be dry, but it's also 12.1%. But um, we have to get it from the bottle into our brand new glasses. And for that, we need the pour cam. Okay, so on the clarity scale, I'm gonna say... If I look down, I can totally see through it. It's very clear, it's just a very dark red. It's so super it's dark. Oh yeah, when you look through it, it's totally mm -hmm. clear. I mean, there's like the ever so much of a hint of... It's like someone looked at this and thought, there should be a haze in there, and that's how much haze is in there, because there's really nothing. Can you, can you even say that? It's so dark. Yeah, it's... maybe not. Maybe not. I don't know. We're analyzing the haze just a little too much. <laughs> it's it's beautifully clear. And the the color is like cherry red. It's yeah. that dark, almost brownish red. Yep. Yep. Um, it's very attractive. Yeah. And uh, I don't know if you noticed, but we're using our new glasses. And um, these work great for getting that smell up there. It's yeah, a, it is the, a wine they, glass. They still have yeah, the, the, the tulip, tulip shape. shape. Yep. You give it that swirl. Speaking of wow. lovely, that aroma is that fantastic. Is, it's so unique, too. Like, there's nothing off-putting. I smell dark chocolate and pomegranate. Like, totally. that's what I'm smelling, which, totally. shocker, that's what it is. <laughs> but it definitely has that rich, deep, oh, dark chocolate yeah. smell. And then the fruitiness on top. This is an experience. You can smell this there's one all day. A, there's a thing, and I, I'm sure there's a scientific term for it, with, that happens with chocolate and with coffee, that when you inhale it really deeply, it like almost sticks in your throat. Like you, you don't get that sensation in the back of your throat when you smell it. No. Maybe I'm just weird. I don't know. No, I'm probably the weird one, but like if I inhale it, I think we're both it, a little weird, but like yeah. The top back of my throat. Hey, everybody has their own experiences with this. <laughs> it's all good. I'm going in for a taste though. I'm getting that, so yay. Oh, wow. Okay, this is very dry, but I don't even mind the dryness. Whoa, that is super chocolate on the end. There's, yeah, there's so much going on here. I need another sip to get to, I'm taking you on a trip on this one. How did we make this? It's been a year. <laughs> I don't know, but I want to do it again. Yeah. Okay. On the entrance, it comes across like a Pinot Noir. It's it's a deep red or a Cabernet. It's it's a deep mm -hmm. red wine, dry notes, mouth puckering a little bit with the tannins, but not. It's not unpleasant. It's it wonderful. It has kind of that musty yeah. thing that the dry. Little, red almost like have. the the oaked kind of thing going yeah. on, and then it gets to the mid mouth, and you go, wait. Wait, what what's it? that? What's that? That's chocolate. What is chocolate doing in my Pinot Noir? And then the chocolate just builds and, it and just, builds and builds. And it's this, it comes across like, you know, like if you had your dark chocolate, like chocolate covered cherries. Yeah. If they were dark chocolate covered cherries, that's kind of what it is by the time you get to the finish. And then the, the exhale is just all dark chocolate. This is amazingly good. This is a dry wine, folks. Dry. And it is a wine. Yeah, I had to check. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, sometimes we make meads. I, right, I was like, I don't right. taste any There's honey. There's no honey. Uh, There's no honey. This yeah, is there, definitely that's a wine. wine. There shouldn't be any honey. Right. Um, I think this is the chocolatey, chocolatest, chocolatey thing we've ever chocolated. I chocolatey fish agree. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. I, I am, I just... I'm a little blown blah, blah, blah. away because... I like dry red wine. I don't love it, but I, I like it. I can appreciate it. I don't like dry white, but dry red. This, though, has this complexity of flavor that is just so amazing. Like, you'd think, oh, dark chocolate pomegranate, that's kind of a, like a kitschy novelty. 
No. no, this is this is some serious flavor. I mean, I, I don't know how else to describe it. What? I am so blown away by this. This is... The only issue that I see with this is I don't think I could enjoy this with food. Other than well, like desserts. I was trying to think what I would eat this with. And... The chocolate and the pomegranate together don't go with many foods to me. To me. I mean, you know, everybody is... Sure. There, there are some Mexican and Brazilian and those kind of things where they bring the chocolate into the meal. Like a mole um, sauce or mm. um, some of the rubs they do on meats and stuff. I, I can know. see... You know, this would go with a steak. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't want to say that, but yeah. Yeah. This could go with a with a steak. Um, but like, the second you start introducing any flavor component to the food, other than just like a basic, <clears throat> something very greasy or meaty, this is going to contradict. Yeah. Not saying yeah. it's bad. This isn't bad. This is this no, is you this pour is this just... after you've eaten a meal. Yes. And explore it for about two hours. Yeah. This is this to me comes across like a really nice fine scotch. Not that it smells or tastes anything like scotch, but the same kind of experience. I can I can imagine it being similar to a port too. Oh where yeah. It's yep. you know you just kind of except the ports are sweet. Think about it for a while. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, but what I mean is, like, as an experience, it's not, this is not reminiscent of a scotch in any way, or mm -hmm. a port in any way, mm -hmm. really. It's just because of it, it's a unique experience to drink it. Um, it sticks with you. It lasts. And the flavors just, you can explore this. It, it compels you to ponder it. Oh, yeah. It wants you to sit down and have a conversation with this beverage. <laughs> now... We don't do performance and re repeatability on one-year tastings because we don't have any idea what we did. We in we intentionally do not check the old footage. Some people have said maybe we should do that towards the end. Here's the problem. We would have to shut off recording, go to the other room, pull up that footage from a year ago, watch that, and then come back. We could do it, but then we've lost the moment right. that we're in. So. I I don't know. I'm kind of torn on that. It's it, we listen when you guys give advice and, and input. We do listen. Sure. It just I, isn't always practical. I think another reason, because another thing that people have said is the disparity between our when you're tasting yep. rating and our initial rating. Sometimes they're lower. Sometimes they're lower, um, and I think that is partly in due because we're separated from the process. Yeah. Now it's unadulterated. It's just our experience with this beverage now in this point in time. Yep. So we have no reference. We have nothing. It's just, okay, yeah. there's a name. There's some numbers. Great. Let's pour it and drink it. And and how are we reacting to that? And I think that's more honest. In, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of speaking. ways to do it. But I, we try to be unbiased and as honest as we can. Sure. You've seen us say, this was not good. I mean, I've said that on several things. This was not good. This is not one of those things. No. No. I'm. Would you like some more? Uh, my glass seems to have never been poured. I don't... <laughs> seems to have never been poured now. Oh, that's, that's new. <laughs> like you haven't had some already. No, oh, okay. I, there is no residue or so anything. So I'm seeing a problem with these new glasses already. They hold they're, a lot. They hold a lot. <laughs> When we have large volumes of tastings to do in one day, it's going to get interesting. It's going to get messy. Um, this, if the if the recipe and the way we did it is easily done, which I believe it is, I don't think this was very complex to make. Make this. Yeah. Don't hesitate. If you like dry red wines or you like dark chocolate. Go for it. Now, you have to understand where we come from here. I can eat 99% dark chocolate. Oh, yeah. No problem. I don't have to put anything in it and mix it with anything. I it, I can appreciate 99% dark we chocolate. We buy that and eat it like a candy bar. Yeah. I like <laughs> black coffee. I don't drink it that way 90% of the time, but I can appreciate black coffee. If you cannot drink those things, you may not like this as much. 
drink those things. If you don't appreciate those things, you may not like this as much. This is dry. There's a good astringency to it. There's a great acidity to it. Yeah. This is a an advanced beverage. I hate to say that because that's just crap to say that. Yeah, but I, unfortunately my brain was going, I was even going to say it was an intellectual beverage. It might be even worse than an advanced. So you have know. to be smart to like this? I see. How the heck do I like it? That's what I was going to say. <laughs> I mean, they say this like in whiskeys, that there's beginner whiskeys and advanced whiskeys. I don't believe in any of that because anybody can buy any whiskey and appreciate it. It doesn't matter if you're just getting into it or not. Wine is the same way. I think dry wine is less approachable for the average person who's never had wine before. So that makes this a little bit more, if you have to say it, advanced, but I don't, I don't really believe in the advanced thing. Yeah, we're just talking in circles right now. Yeah. And that's okay. If you like dry red wine, Drink like this. this. Make this, drink this, share it with your friends, convert them but, to, to the but ways you know, of... you know what we have to do? The dark punk. We still have to give it a score. <laughs> okay. By the way, for all of those of you that think we're drunk, no, not even remotely close. We're just weird. All right. Our scoring goes 1 through 10 with the occasional... 11 reserved for those things that are just absolutely amazing. One basically means we'd probably just dump it out. I mean, we'll talk to you about it, we'll tell you, but we're gonna dump it out. It's crap, you're not gonna want it. A five is something that you're going down your list of stuff and you go, oh, that, yeah, I'll try that. You didn't think of it. You almost forgot you had it. But now that you found it, you go, yeah, I'll give that a shot. A 10 is when you go, I want to drink something. That's the thing I want. That's a 10. An 11 is just a better version of a 10, really. Make sense? Does that work for you? Clear as mud. Yeah, clear as mud. Awesome. Oh, her glass is empty yet again. Do you have a score for I prepared? Do. Oh, oh boy, <laughs> here we go. This is gonna be a good one. I hope you guys are ready. One, two, three, 10.5. I, w I couldn't go to 11 because I, I'll, I'll be a low man. So to me, this is incredible. This is one of the best things we've ever made. Um, and I wasn't expecting that. Mm -mm. When I saw the bottle, I was like, oh, yeah, okay. I vaguely remember that one being okay. You know, what impresses me about it is the fact that it's a dry wine and I like it this much. That means the flavors are perfect together. Why didn't I go 11? Honestly, because there's things that I've given an 11 to that I like better than this. Just a little bit. It's raining. It is raining. Yep. Which explains a lot of things. Yep. But I believe this is higher than a 10. This is the kind of thing that I, I would actually go, like if I was in the mood, I'd go, I want some of that dark chocolate pomegranate wine. Plain and simple, I would do it. I don't know how often I'll reach for it, to be honest. She'll probably go for it more than I will. Um, I tend to drink whiskey when I want to have a drink. I just do. But yeah, this is incredible. This is incredible. You gave it the highest score you've ever given. I've given something in 11 before. This is the highest score oh, yeah, you've yeah, ever yeah. given. Right, right. Well, you know. And you've only given that a few it times. Can't be two, maybe three times, you know? <clears throat> right. This this has shades of Klingon blood wine for me. Okay. Yeah. Um, obviously not the same flavor profile at all. It's chocolate instead of coffee. Right. And which is better for it you. It doesn't have the chili and right. et cetera. Oh, uh, we put chilies in this. But, <sighs> but it's got that, there's a certain... Je ne sais quoi. Je ne sais quoi. <laughs> uh, earthy, musty oh, yeah. thing going on in these dark reds with, with the coffee chocolate combo. I think that... they add a certain, uh, almost like, you're saying earthy. I think it's more of a deeper backbone. Yeah. Um, difficult to describe. It adds a level of... Maturity. Like, it, it feels like it's old. Oh, yeah. This this tastes like 30 years old. Yeah. 
Like you would swear this is like, way this, over. This is something you found in an abandoned building and this backed, tucked away yeah. shelf. And, and you, you had, had to, to like scrape the dust the off dust of it. The dust off, and, and you're like, oh, this was a good year. Yeah. Uh, 2022, that was a great year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but hey, for the chocolate pomegranate, it certainly was. Yeah, this is, this is incredible. We can go on and on and on, but we're not going to. We're just going to say, if you haven't made this yet, go make it. And as always, guys, thanks so much for watching and have a great day. Bye-bye.